We are here approaching uh, the premiere of uh, The White King the, in our first features competition program. And uh, we have Jörg Titzel and uh, Al Alex Selfrecht, the directors, the directing duo here with us. So could you first first tell us what, what's it like to be? What are you expecting from the festival? What are your hopes? And uh, yeah, just just share the emotions. I'm just trying to trying to look at all the sponsors here. Can I can I have a car? Can I have a Toyota out of this, um, please? Um, what else? Um, no, we no we. Uh, first of all, we're, we're we're very excited to be here because it's uh, we've heard amazing things about uh, Black Knights and and uh, and we already have had an amazing time. Like we felt so welcome. Um, it's good because normally people always kick us out wherever we go, so this is very nice. And um, and we've seen snow, our first snow of the year, so it's been amazing. And uh, so it should be the White Knights, really. But then it's the White King, so it's it's good. Um, it's great to be here. Yeah, extraordinary organization, amazing reception. I mean, I would love to get, I would love to be able to see some films. <laughs> That I mean, the programming looks really fantastic, and um, so I'm trying to get into as many screenings as possible. Uh, but also, there's a really interesting event for co-production and sales that uh, we'd like to turn up at. So, try and talk to meet people all over Europe for you know our next projects. And of course, for the White King, of course, we are we, we cannot wait to show it to audiences here. Um, you know, especially in, in in Estonia, you guys have such an incredible history and such 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 a diverse culture and 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 our, and our film comes from that it comes from a a complicated history and and a, and a very uh, and an outlook on the future and and i think and this this country is specifically um it, it's amazing to see how how estonia has has developed and evolved and and uh, and it's both rooted in history, but at the same time, you have some of the most advanced and high-tech companies here, and uh, it's very exciting. So I think our film, in a way, is also this marriage of past, present, and future. And so hopefully, you know, people will relate to the content. So moving on to the film itself, uh, as you already started, um, uh, it is uh, the story, The White King. It's based on a book, and uh, it is. A story about, of course, past, which you know we Estonians, as you know, have also endured, and uh, and also the future. So, how how do you how, how would you describe? Uh, uh, is this uh, a comment uh, of the, on our future, or how would you how would you say that this film and the story is? Uh, uh, related to our, you know, current status quo in the world, the political and the social. Well, the actress Agnes Dean, who plays Hannah in the film, uh, coined a very interesting phrase. She said it was a sci-fi period drama, which is really interesting because, as Jörg said, we we take period elements. Um, Dragoman's book is rooted in in communism, but actually, he never specifies where the story takes place, which is. There's a wonderfully surreal element to it, and it, the feeling that it could happen anywhere at any time. When we started adapting the book, um, that was very much the spirit of it. It was a warning, it was a dystopian vision. It was more of an Orwellian approach to the material. And, um, well, it becomes more and more relevant, and I think it's slightly coincidental, but it's, it's become almost documentary, you could argue. <laughs> the uncertainty in the world, I mean. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we had this uh, crazy experience in making the film because originally we, you know, we took this book that's rooted in the past, we, we set it in the future, and, and then we realized we were actually making something about our present day. And, but we didn't know that until we finished it. Um, and, you know, we finished the film, you know, during Brexit. <laughs> so, um, and, and here we are now a week after Donald Trump was apparently elected in America. I was there uh, and I still can't sort of believe it, actually. It feels, it feels less real than our movie, actually. And that's what's kind of scary, is like when, when our fiction uh, becomes less absurd and, 
than than reality. And so we we live in a in an absurd time. We live we live in something that most sci-fi writers, if they wrote it, would go like, no, no one would ever believe that. That's silly. Um, and so um, our film is is it feels like a realistic. I think I hope uh, it feels like a real historical approach to something that happens in the future, but is ultimately something that we're probably living through right now. I can add to that. Uh, yeah, the, the one of the first images in the title sequence, which sort of explains the background of how you know the world came to be, is a border wall, which of course has a lot of resonance. And I think what Dragoman explores in the book, and we try to also explore it in the film, is the idea of a child you know, on the periphery of adulthood or teenage years, he's 12 in, in the film, growing up in a place that is walled off, that is a dictatorship, the apparatus of which we don't see all the time. We don't see it in our face all the time because we see it from the point of view of a 12-year-old boy. And of course, a 12-year-old who's gr grown up in that doesn't notice uh, the way things are. They've, he's grown up with it, but gradually, he comes to see after the, his father is taken away, he comes to see the world how it really is. He's enlightened at the end. But it is about how do you grow up in a place like that and how do you raise a child in a place like that? And for me and Jörg, who are also parents together, it's, it's a question that we're literally living every day right now. What place is safe? You know, we live in the UK. We're Europeans, you know. What place is safe for our children? I'm also half American. It's it's ha a very hard. And how do you raise your kids? You know? And 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 do you do you run away or do you stay and fight? Um, you know, it's the eternal question. I mean, you know, Brexit happens. Do you move to Europe? You know, uh, you are an African American or a Mexican or a woman in America. Do you leave or do you stay and 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 say no? I, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not going to allow this country to change. Uh, and as, as I think it's both, um, you know, I, I, and at the same time, we, you know, our film is uh, the, the, st the, the story of being a child in this who ultimately has had one of his parents taken away and who also is perhaps, and I won't give anything away, but might also feel abandoned by at least parts of his own family. I feel that in our society today, we feel like that as well. We feel like our parents, our generation, I think, uh, feels like our parents have abandoned us, or perhaps they're too old and weak to do anything about it. And now it's up to us. What, what do we do? Like, do we run? Do we fight? Do we do both? And so that's what the film is ultimately about. It's about that beginning of that, that thought, that political awareness, and that, you know, and that that al and also that love for your family that drives you through it. Um. I have uh, one question um, about the aesthetics of the film. That usually, where we see traditionally dystopias are depicted, uh, the choice of style is usually very grey, dark. But you have moved towards another direction, so it makes it. I think this is uh, something that gives this uh, very, very effective realness to it, especially now as you described what the world is be becoming. So I was uh, thinking, uh, what are your like choices behind the style of the film and the aesthetics? Uh, you're right. I mean, for us, it would be the obvious thing to have a monochromatic feel to the film. But for us, you know, dystopia can happen anywhere. What Dragoman said, something really distinctive, he said that dictatorship dwells in every human being that it's in the people, not the outward trappings of the society. And this society, it is, be there are, nature is beautiful, but, you know, there is oppression lurking everywhere. It's lurking in a grocery store. It's lurking in the most mundane, daily life, everyday life, boring things. It's just around you like a blanket on your shoulders. You don't see it, you feel it, and you can still have this juxtaposition, you can still be in a beautiful place and things can be dark. Things are complex, they're not one or the other. You know, that's how we felt about it aesthetically. And what's really strange is that when we, we live in, we work in a commercial industry, well it has to be, I mean people have to survive, you know, we have to make the money back for our producers, etc. So the idea is to always make everything as clear 
and explain everything as much as possible because you need to, as many people need to get it as possible. And the thing is, we, we have now been doing this for, you know, I think a good 20 years. I think most of the cinema that we see coming out of, especially Hollywood, is so explained and so clear and so um, caricat caricatural in a way that, that, you know, when you watch the bad guys in V for Vendetta, it's like, well, this is what a dictatorship looked like. They're just going to be a bunch of people who are like really, really loud and obnoxious and they'll have like big fat flags behind them and they'll be on every TV screen everywhere. And it's cool, you know, it's like, that's never going to happen to us. And the thing is, you know, it ha this stuff creeps up on us so quickly and it usually creeps up on us when we think we're safe. And, uh, and our film, I think, is, is about that kind of world. It's like we can live in a beautiful world, in a beautiful environment, in beautiful nature that uh, hopefully we can still continue taking care of. But we can have some pretty dark people around us. And, and the people that don't like us, we don't see. They don't like to see us. They will keep as far away from us as they can. And that's what we're also showing in this film. The, the evil and the system is, doesn't want to hang out with the poor and the small people. Uh, they, they will keep very separate from us. And uh, that's what our film is ultimately about. And, and also, you know, it is from the point of view of a 12-year-old boy and children play and children play football and they go on adventures. And that's very much evident in the book. And you have to also show that children are children and they behave like children. And so and nature is the playground in this impoverished state that we created. So. And yes, as we see, then children are the first ones that are approached to, you know, break them, break the wall. But uh, you spoke about liking people. Uh, how would you uh, describe the process of uh, being married and directing a film? And also, how would you describe the work with the actors in the film, such as Jonathan Price and Agnes Dane and the others? Well. The first question, uh, being married is a challenge, but it was also a wonderful creative experience. It's hard to go home at the end of the day and <laughs> stop talking about the film, but we got through that. And I think it w it's an interesting marriage of our two sensibilities as because we direct in our own right also. But this particular project, it was really, we felt it was right to work together and we did get through it. And in terms of the actors, uh, we were in love with our cast from day one, we pushed for the cast. It was our first film. In a way, we didn't have a right to that cast, but our work in the theatre, um, the fact that we knew Fiona, Jonathan, Greta, very established on the stage as well, and we'd done work in the theatre. Uh, not with them. But we not with them, not with them. Uh, we, we really chose actors who were not only great on screen, but would work in the theatre. I, I tended to interact a bit more uh, with the actors than Jörg. He was far more with camera and the visual side of things. And we, that was how we broke it up on set. Of course, there was crossover, but that's how we did it. And of course, I felt very at home coming from the theatre, working with theatre actors. Um, and it, it was a great... I mean, they, they were really, really wonderful. Uh, Jonathan Price taught us a lot. Um, Fiona is a brilliant intellect. She's also a director, and she's an opera director. Um, and Agnes Dean threw herself into the part. She is really an emotionally connected, uh, very, very natural kind of actress. Um, and very, she was wonderful with Lorenzo, the young boy, who himself is, is, you know, he's in every frame of the film and he does a fantastic job. And both Lorenzo and his parents, that's the other thing, the parents of kids are vital on set. So, and they were all very, very helpful, weren't they? And also we've had wonderful actors and we even managed to get amazing actors for the small parts, for the, I mean, to, to get, you know, Claire Hope Ashty uh, to play, you know, Shabby's mother so beautifully and so honestly. And for me, she is the symbol of that oncoming sort of rebellion, of that sort of seed of the population actually wanting to actually stand up, uh, but I won't give too much away. Uh, or, or the incredible Olafur Dari Olafsson from Iceland, who, who plays pickaxe in the film, who's given us such an incredibly generous and beautiful performance. And, you know, he's, he's a guy who, you know, who plays lead roles in amazing films. He's, you know, he's been in, in, 
and 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 Spielberg's latest, the BFG. He's you know he's 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 been entrapped. The wonderful TV series, uh, and for him to you know for all of these people to put faith you know in us as sort of young you know not young anymore but sort of okay let's pretend uh, first time directors is 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 incredible. So we've been really really lucky, and hopefully um, you know on the next one you know people our reputation will be but you know so bad that we can do it again. <laughs> it would be nice. Well, I, th I think I think making a movie together is 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 very similar to having a child together. Actually, uh, uh, you um, you dream about something, um, and then you spend a long time gestating and waiting for it to come together. And then once it comes to life, it is completely different from what you expected, but possibly and hopefully much more beautiful. And uh, and then once you start raising that child and you actually get that film in this case uh, out into the real world, uh, it's uh, it's going to be challenging every day. You know, you'll have to, you know, you have to deal with your child getting bullied. You know, with, with the rejection that you get from the industry uh, is is always very very hard. And uh, that's something that we were, uh, I think, prepared for intellectually, but perhaps not emotionally at first. Uh, you know, going out to every new festival, every new audience, and then also like the marketplace like facing that you know sending out your kid to, to to university and ultimately you know getting a job so i mean for us you know we're, we're parents you know as well so so we've had we've had some good practice with you know having two kids actually our, our second child our first child being born at the very beginning of the development process of this film and our second one in the middle of like in the middle of developing it and getting ready to, to actually shoot it so um so i think this is our our third child in a way actually uh we have a dog as well now, um, but uh, it's yeah, it's it is is it's like having a baby, and it's like so. So the fact that we're still married um, is 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 great, uh, uh, but miraculous. we miraculous, um, I think. Uh, but it's uh, it's a it's a great experience, and of course, you know, and now she doesn't want to want to work with me again, so she's going to direct possibly the next film. I'm going to direct a film uh, uh, separately as well, but we'll always help each other as producers and and also direct a film together when we find the right material again for that. Well, I hope the screening of your third baby tonight will go as you wished for. And uh, thank you for this interview, Jörg and uh, Alex. Thank yeah. you.